Over the last couple of videos, we've been building this application, which is in many ways a small, complete user interface to a database, a very simple database. One thing we have not covered is how to control what items are being shown on the screen. And that's what I will talk about today, where we will look at filters and how filters can control the view state. So first of all, I want something to filter on uh, and there isn't anything that's really promising in this list. So let's go ahead and modify the data. I want to add a field. Let's call this status. So let's now pretend that this little application we've been working for is the database for a club, maybe a, an evening club or a swimming club or something like that. And I'm going to say that every person in the database is uh, has a status. And that status can be one of member, meaning that they are currently a member of the club. It can be a prospect. That means a person who is perhaps interested in joining the club. And it can also be lapsed, meaning that it is a person who is no longer a member of the club. Perhaps they haven't been paying their dues. And I'm going to add that as a status field on the table of people. And that will be a string field where I have these options, member, prospect, and lapsed. And let's set that for a bunch of these members. Um, I can set that over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and set something randomly here. Okay, so now we will want to show that field in the list. This list is getting a little bit long, so let's delete the let's delete the show field. We didn't really use that for very much. And I want to add another field, which is the status. And let's put that near the end. There we go. Right, here we go. Status, member, prospect, lapsed, etc. Okay, so now I have something I can filter on. So to create a filter, you create a view of the filter view pattern. And we'll call this the person filter. So I'm going to build a simple filter today that just will allow us to filter on certain values for the status field. So you will notice we are in the drag and drop builder that you used to build edit views, show views and pages as well. Uh, you have a, a couple of components that are different. So the search bar has special meaning, special purpose in filtering. You have toggles which create buttons and selects. Um, I, in fact, recommend just starting with a field. So that works a little bit similar to um, the show and the edit views. So we drag in a field. And now I choose the right field, status. And um, you can see I have some options here again in the field view. Some of these are special for, for, for filters. Um, but as you can also use uh, standard field views that are used in edit forms. You can use those to um, you can use those in the uh, as filters as well. They'll be translated as filters. So just for a standard um, entry for the status field, you can just set this to edit, and you will get a drop down. And um, I guess that's it. Let's see what that looks like. So if I run that now, uh, I get uh, just a drop down, and I can choose values. And you can see that very little happens. Um, 
I can choose the three different values that I have, and I can also choose a blank value here. But I don't see anything here. Um, that's because all that's happening right now is that a filter is changing the view state. Now, what is the view state? I just resized my, my browser. So for this video, you can see the uh, address bar and the view state is everything that is after the question mark. So you can see that that changes as I change the value that I am filtering on. But I also wanted to actually see some values and you don't see values in the filter you only change the view state, but that view state influences what is shown in other views. So to see this filter together with a uh, list of uh, people in the database, uh, the easiest way to, to do that is to create a page and to include in that page both the filter and the view that you want that filter to influence. So let's do that. Let's create a page called filtered people. And we will include two views. First of all, the filter. And secondly, the list of people, which I called my list. So now by running this page, and changing the value in the filter, I am changing which rows from the table are shown in the list. So here I see my two members, my two prospects, and my two lapsed, value, lapsed members. And if I choose the blank value, I see everyone. That is the simplest form of filtering. Now we can do some other things. Let's open the view and let's change this to a button instead. I'm going to delete the field. And I'm going to add three buttons. Um, we can already see what this looks like. So there are three buttons here, but they have no labels, no values. So we have to, for each button that we're filtering on, we have to choose the field and the value they become. So I'm going to set status to and now we can go back and now by clicking these I get a different kind of filtering. Instead of a drop down, I now have buttons. There's also a module that you can install that gives you uh, all three buttons automatically. If I click it again, I get all the members. Um, the other thing that we had that was quite neat is the checks checkbox group so here I can get multiple groups and if if none of them are selected then you get all of the members uh, it's probably not what a logician would have done but I think this is, is fairly um, consistent with most uh, web um, filters on e-commerce sites and you often see this if none are selected then you get all of them again maybe let's just see the status changing again here status here can have 
multiple values of the same field. You don't have to do anything about this UI here in the address bar, except you can, when you get into more advanced uses, you can use formulas to influence this state. Um, but for now, you can just use it using these filters. Um, maybe we can see how the search bar works. The search bar allows you to enter, let's put this in a column. The search bar allows you to do full text search. Well, in this case, it's, it's, it's full text restricted to that table. So if I search for Olivia, I get Olivia Parks here. If I select everyone who's called Olivia and is a member, I get no rows. But if I select the prospect, then I get the same row that we have here. One thing that can be quite nice about the search element in the filter view is that it has the ability to act as a dropdown. Uh, it can be a bit hard to select, just click on something that's not gray. Um, so if I enable has drop down, I can open that drop down and I can place elements inside it. So this is a technique that I often use. If I can. There we go. And now, and if we get rid of the column, And see, we've got uh, that element inside the drop down. Let's see what that looks like. So now I can type Taylor here, but I can also search on members, prospects. There we go. One thing you may want is uh, to create a page where the filter already has, or where the state already has a certain value. Let's say that I am creating a page for the reception where they can see anyone who is allowed admission into the club. So what I'll want to do here is let's just call this reception list of people. And I want the reception only to see members. They're not really interested in who's lapsed and they're not interested in who's a prospect because they are not to gain admission into this club. So what I can do is I can drop a view in here and then I can set a state here. So if I set the view state to be shared, it is shared with the whole page and therefore it's influenced by the filter. That's what we saw before. But if I put a fixed state on a view inside a page, then that is a view that is isolated from the state of the rest of the page where I can choose some specific values. So if I now choose status, so again, this is the fixed state that we're going to put on this view in this page. And I will want to make show only the members. So we can see that in the preview. And if I show that, then here we go, I see only the members in this view on this page. Okay, I think that wraps it up for uh, f filters and for uh, the view state. This is going to be um, more important and more powerful when we get to foreign keys and uh, table relationships, because then you can use that state to jump through those relationships. But uh, we'll have to wait uh, for a couple more videos. In the next video, I will show you how views can be embedded into different views and you can do that in, in different ways. Uh, and that uh, gives you a compositionality for creating your 
user interface out of views that are sampled from many other views.